Hi guys, welcome to the Iron Orchid Designs Facebook page. Um, this is Michelle from Serendipity House. I'll get it, Judy. Um, and I'm here today because I have got a table full of um, scraps from transfers and I don't like to throw them away. I save everything. And so what we're gonna do today is um, I got some buckets that you can just get at your local craft store. These, um, sometimes I use sap buckets, sometimes regular flower buckets, but I found these cool ones and they just hang on the wall. So this part will go on the wall. And then, so I'm gonna, we're gonna decorate this with scraps and uh, a stamp. Hey Charlotte, yeah, say hello when you come on. I need to find myself here. Um, the one thing I actually forgot to grab, I've got a table full of stuff, I forgot to grab a stick, so one second. And while I'm gone, you get a sneak peek at this piece that I'm so excited about back here. Tell me what you think of it. I'm not gone far or long. I'm just like 10 feet away, but um, I forgot my sticks. Um, I'll be showing pictures of this soon, but this has got um, the uh, wallflower transfer cut and arranged all over it, and I just absolutely love it. All right, let me find myself here, and then I'm gonna turn the camera down, uh, and we'll get started. Now, sometimes, um, sometimes I paint these, but actually, usually I do. But so today, I'm going to not paint it and just kind of have that um, naked look on the back so that you have, you know, it's less, less for you to do. You don't need to paint these, but I will need to seal it when I'm done. Okay, I see all you guys. Yes, the, um, the chest behind me is Salty Kiss with a wash of Bohemian Blue. I'm gonna face you down to my messy table here. And then Wallflower, and so today I'm lining the drawers. All right, again, you're not gonna see my face. You can see the crafts or my face or be too far away. So this is how we're doing it. All right, so I think you can see I've got like a whole bunch of scraps here um, that I save by, I just, you, if you have scraps that you're using, just save um, the backing. And I usually put them all like this and then roll them up and put them back in the tube so that they stay um, nice and, um, you know, the air's not getting to them. Nothing's getting on them. Okay. So the only thing that I've done so far, I just bought this at the craft store. The only thing that I've done so far is clean it. Um, we cleaned it with cred cutter just to make sure there's nothing on there. And I'm actually, I've got butterflies and ferns and I've got a whole bunch left from the uh, chest behind me because I had to use two transfers and so I actually only use one and a half. So this is a piece that I'm gonna put along the bottom that is from uh, the new transfer called Wallflower. And I think I can do this upside down. Um, so what I like about these are that they can go right to the edge and they look like they're coming off, um, coming in from the edge. But what I'm going to do is there's a little tiny piece on the bottom here or on the side and so this will go right up against my edge. I'm actually gonna cut that piece off so I can get it nice and tight against this. Hi, Shayla, hi, Patty, Robin. Um, the chest behind me that, um, hi, Liza. Um, the chest behind me, it was painted in DIY paint, Salty Kiss. And um, yeah, so today I have to line the drawers. My arm is shaking here. I have to line the drawers and um, do a little something to get the drawers to fit in tightly. And then um, I will probably do the sh photo shoot on it tomorrow. I'm super excited though because um, I haven't worked on a piece in a while where I've been just totally in my zone and um, I really enjoy doing this piece. All right, so this part is where I'm gonna apply the transfer and then the stamp. So I'm gonna put it right down on the bottom and right to the edge so it looks like it's coming from the edge. So you take off the backing. Now doing um, buckets and aluminum and all of that has been pretty popular. So have, have any of you done this all, these kind of crafts already? with the transfers. I'm curious what other people do with their transfer scraps. 
Hi from New Zealand. How are you? Thanks for watching. It's crazy how far and wide we reach everybody. All right, I'm using the stick that comes in with a transfer if you haven't used these before. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I do um, on my other pieces. I'm gonna just secure it on, but then I'm gonna find a bubble. And we're gonna ride the wave. Now this, here's one thing if you haven't done a curved piece. Because it's curved, obviously it doesn't fit flat. So even though I put this right to the edge, because of the shape of the bucket, it didn't actually go to the edge. But that stuff that you can, dis if it bothers you, that you can go ahead and disguise by, um, I'm gonna stamp over it, but you can put another little piece of a transfer there. Uh, if you're painting, you can put your little piece of paint there. All right, it's gonna come off real easily, but we're gonna need to be sure. Look at that. I'm gonna put my stick down because I'm holding it in place, but I've got the air bubble and I'm just pushing it with my hand right now. You can really see the color changing on that as it comes up. Of course, it's gonna stop as soon as I hold this up to the camera, right? So how many of you um, have cool projects that you've done with your uh, transfer scraps? I wanna know what you guys all do with them. You save them, I'm assuming. Every little bit is worth saving. Coasters is another fun thing that I have done with them. You just have to really seal. Okay, so that's on there. Because I pushed it some off with my hand, again, you wanna make sure to go back and rub it all down. Make sure it's really sticking well. Make sure that you have, that you pick up any bubbles smooth them down because your main concern right now is that you want to have the best contact possible between your transfer and what you're putting it on. Whether that be paint or metal or steel or glass. And this is going to be sealed. Okay, so there's the beginning. I like it against this silver here. Can you hear me good, Beth? Hey, Lynn, how are you? Um, all right, I've got some ferns and butterflies. Let's, let's cut out, let's see, over here I think I'm going to put a little fern and then a butterfly and then we'll make another, or we'll stamp it and make another one. This is quick. Um, this is the perfect um, kind of thing to spray seal. I think I don't use spray sealers often, but I think that a spray sealer would be great on this particular project. Usually I'm doing furniture and I wouldn't spray spray seal furniture, so. All right, so I'm just laying that right over. Now the smaller pieces, because they're smaller, they're not gonna push on with your hand like the one I did a minute ago, because really you're pressing on these smaller area pieces and they, it really needs to, every bit of it needs to be rubbed really. There we go. But it still comes off easily. Whoops, I missed a piece there. All right, there we go. So also you can layer, which um, I did a lot of layering on the piece behind me that I showed you when we started. And um, I love layering. It just gives a nice deeper effect. Here, look, I'm gonna layer right over. Here's a fern. I'm gonna lay it right over that. It gives more depth when you can do it. I like layering the words on this particular one instead of using the transfer for words. When I'm done, we're gonna use um, the kindest regard stamp on this with ink. Now I've done this before on um, a sample board, some art and a piece of furniture. And so the trick to doing that is before you do a sealer, if you're wiping it on, I usually, I wait at least a day, at least 24 hours. So you're not picking up your ink and blurring it. It just needs time to, there. So this is, this I just layered right over the top of it. And you can keep doing that. All right, so should I do another one? I'm gonna put something here, because this will be for sale. I'm sure that won't bug anybody. So let's find a piece. It's the kind of thing that would bother me just because I did it. 
because I didn't do it on purpose. All right, we're gonna put another firm piece there. Now I put these in the shop. I like to put bundled lavender or cotton in them, in them for sale. Um, but they or hydrangeas look really pretty if you've got them at home. Easy. There we go. See how easily that came off. All of the uh, products that I'm using today, uh, the Iron Orca Design products, you can find from your local retailer. See, I just covered up my faux pas with a little transfer. You can find at your local retailer, and I will drop a link in here again. And there's also on the Iron Orchid Design website, I think I'm going to put something right here, and then we're going to stamp. On the Iron Orchid Design website, there's a Find Your Retailer tab, and you can go right to that. And you can put in your zip code and find somebody that's close to you um, for a brick and mortar shop or you could look to see uh, who has websites online, but that's all on the ironorchiddesigns.com and I'll drop it here. All right. I get lost in this and I wanna just keep doing more and more and more. Like I could just, it could just be never ending. I love that layered. I love how it's building up. Hello from wintry Idaho. What kind of weather are you getting there? Oh, sorry, I didn't see your question. Um, yeah, DIY paint is chalk and clay based. I can answer questions that I miss after we're done, after I'm done so I can focus on. All right, I think that's good. Now, here's what we're gonna do. All right, so this is the kindest regard stamp. See, I need to drop my trash on the floor because now I have all this extra stuff here. There we go. <laughs> now we can't see it. All right, this is the kindest regard stamp. It is a letter, it's script. I love layering this over or under a lot of the projects that I do. Um, and for this one, I'm going to use some of the Iron Orchid Designs uh, decor ink on it. I've got it already. I haven't decided what color. I picked up the three different, two blues and a black, and I've got them in the ink pads already. Um, let's try the blue. It's the new Ocean's Blue. And so it's a really pretty color blue, and I'm pretty sure my pads are loaded up well. So here's how we're gonna do this. Um, first of all, I don't need to ink the whole thing, so let me just see how this is gonna fit here, or where I wanna put it. Oh, this might drive me crazy. You know how when you turn it, it gets all, it doesn't, it doesn't go straight because of the curve. What I just said, that might drive me a little nuts. All right, let's see. So I want it down lower so that the whole thing gets some writing. So I'm gonna do this whole middle section I'm gonna ink up. Or from here down, I'll do the bottom section. All right, so when you have your ink on your ink pad, all you do is I hope it's juicy enough. It is okay. I can see it going on. I might put a little bit more on there actually. One sec. Let me grab my balloon ink. I like it nice and juicy. Where is it? Green, black. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Ocean's Deep. Here we are. Okay, so here's the, here's the uh, Ocean's Deep ink. And I'm just gonna put a little more on because it should really be nice and juicy. I love, the Kindest Regard stamp is, this stamp and the birds, blossoms, and branches is the one that I use the most. It just, see, they seem so versatile to just layer and add to things, don't you think, Canice? All right, so I'm just dropping it in. It's soaking right in. And see, it's just soaking right down there. All right. All right. All right. I used to, I say that all the time when I talk to myself. My grandmother used to always be like, who are you talking to, Michelle? I'm worried about you. Okay, now we're going to try that again. Yeah, you see the difference? See how juicy that is? See how dark it's coming up? That's what I want. I 
do not want though what is a hair. I'm getting a little bit of uh, ink that I'm gonna wipe off just. If you do it quickly like I just did, then you get some here that you don't really, you don't wanna put on your project. So I'm just gonna get off. Okay, here we go. So this, by the way, is one of the stamps that I leave on the backing. Um, this still has the hard plastic on the back of it. I know there's always a lot of questions about that, which ones to take off. Um, but this isn't a stamp that you ever really need to separate. So leaving it on the backing, I think, makes it a lot easier to stamp with. All right, I'm going to try to center this. I'm going to put my hand down in the middle. Excuse my dirty fingernails. I've been doing washes all week, and when your hands are dry in the wintertime, um, washes are not really the friend of your fingers because you get paint stuck everywhere. All right, I can feel that is not going down flat here just because of the curve. So it's gonna be, you know, you're not gonna be able to read it, but it is gonna ink, I hope. Okay, so the trick to uh, this, oh, that looks so pretty, is you basically leave it, leave you one hand here. Like I'm pressing, pressing down pretty hard here so this doesn't slide. But then I'm going over the stamp and I'm just kind of tickling it here. And so if, if you accidentally got ink, places you don't want it in between, if you're just tickling the top of your stamp where the impression is coming through, it shouldn't transfer any mistakes or sloppy ink you got. All right, so now I'm just gonna lift. I got a little double vision there, but it just adds a little kind of all over you finish this design, see? So this is very wet. I am going to leave this and let it dry at least 24 hours. Um, any uh, top coat will do water-based or polyurethane, any water-based, you could spray it. I probably will spray it. Um, if I wait two days, then I might try to rub a top coat on it. So what do you think of that? That's pretty quick and easy. Pretty quick and easy. Now, um, let's see, did I do that in like 10 minutes? Feels like it. I'm gonna do another one and try to do it with black ink. Let's do another one real quickly. You could ask questions if you have any. Hey, Jerry, how are you? perfection as usual. Thank you, Tracy. You know that I kind of thrive on mistakes more than, I don't thrive on them, but I go with them. I'm going to wipe this off since I'm changing the ink color. I just have baby wipes here. I'm going to change to a different color. Okay, we're going to quickly do some transfers on a second. This one's a little, uh, let's do this one. See how different they all are? I'm gonna do the lighter one, put this aside. All right, I've got butterflies and I have, this is a piece of fronds. That looks like it's too, too long. I don't wanna lose the end off of there. I got, the butterflies are gonna go on second. What else do I have on my table? I have a big, Frond. I have some of these. All right, this is, I've got this stuff everywhere. All right, I'm going to cut this. I think this is a piece left over from, oh, who recognizes? This might be left over from the side of Flora or from Botanist Journal. I'm not actually positive. But let's just start, let's start layering. I love this one um, because it's it's um, got little colors of blue and pink in with it. All right, see it comes off pretty easily. There's one. Yeah, since I don't have more of it to fill the whole thing, I'm going to off-center it. I'm going to put this off to the side, off to the other side. There we go. You can see it coming right up. 
Hey Karen, how are you? I love the blue ink too. It looks, um, it was kind of hard to see on that, but when I've used it over white, the ocean's blue has such a pretty shade. Um, and if you guys haven't ha gotten the new ink yet, we also have empty bottles um, and we're trying to collect recipes because you can mix your own colors with the new shades that we have, which is great. Cause then, you know, if you want like more of a teal color, I'm not, I can't uh, say a recipe right now because I have a bad memory. I would have to look it up. Um, but so if you come up with a good color recipe, share it with us. And I think we're trying to keep those somewhere so that we can all just benefit off each other's knowledge. But sometimes there's a little piece that's stubborn for whatever reason. There it is. Whoops. All right, so I lost a piece. I'm going to go back and try to push that on. I can see where it goes. There you go, Tracy, a mistake. So when you make this mistake... This is how you go back and fix it. There we go. Can never tell it wasn't there. All right, what else do I have? Let's see what I have from the fronds over here. I've got a whole bunch of leaves left from my last project. Normally, if I've got a big project, of course, I take my time and I lay stuff out and I you know, like the, the, the dresser behind me took quite a lot of uh, planning. I don't just grab stuff and transfer it on. But for things like this, you grab whatever you have and just keep layering. And then you're not wasting anything. Um, Lisa, I'm not sure if these could go outside. Uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to answer that only because I would need to have done it myself and tried it. Um, I think, uh, yes, I would put them outside, but I would put them in a covered area. Um, you know, anything like this in the weather, if it's not protected, I, you know, there's no guarantees that it's going to hold up. And of course, I'm in snowy New Hampshire, so it's wet and snowy and yucky here. So there's things that we, we get extreme temperatures Oh, that looks, I love the three-dimensional look of that fern. That's from the new fronds transfer. There's tons of little things like this to cut out. I think I used the other half on something else already. Let's see, and I'm going to put that one across here. Making it up as I go along, you guys. Hey, Clarence. Um, yes, Karen, you could use paint instead of ink. I just grabbed the ink for today because um, it was easier because it's in my ink pads. When I use paint, I usually apply with a, a brayer. You know, I put a little bit of paint, a dollop of paint down on a piece of the acetate that we have and roll it with a brayer. So it was actually just quicker for me to grab the ink. And of course, if you use paint, you can pretty much seal that right away. I'm only saying wait to seal because of the properties of the ink. Because I've learned the hard way that if I go back to try to seal it in a couple hours when it looks dry to me, it probably actually isn't dry and will lift because I've done it. Been there, done that. Now the ink is a permanent ink. Uh, and it also, the IOD ink also is an ink that will stand up to, it's light fast. All right. All right. Slowly lift. Something else in there. I guess this one's going to be mostly green. Do I have any more? I have this left over from a flora transfer. I use the flowers and have this left. So now I'm gonna... These are great and when I do workshops, these are great because um, everybody can just look at everything and grab what they want, but some of these are probably left over from workshops. You know how many projects I have of things that, I, I wouldn't say they would normally be thrown away, but. Cut it right there at the bottom. 
and then we're going to ink in black in a minute. There we go. So I'm going right over the ones that I put on before. It's going right over one of the ferns or fronds. Oh, good. I'm glad I answered your question about the ink, Karen. Now, hopefully most of you have craft stores to get this stuff uh, around you. Or, you know, you could also do it on an old can, any kind of aluminum, like an old uh, a bucket or a can or something like that. But the only bummer if you don't have a place near you and you want some of these things is that they're big, they're, the shipping is expensive. So I have always got my eye out in thrift stores for little things that I can use my transfer scraps on. There we go, there's that bubble. Oops, and I missed a piece, see? I grabbed it too fast, so I'm going to place that back down. You can do that on furniture too, if you accidentally do not push it down. All right, and here's what we got. I think we're ready to stamp. Maybe I'll put something right here. Um, but we do need to go back and press down to make sure it's all down, especially right before you, you seal. All right, this is a piece from Wander. This is from the top of Wander. And I'm gonna put that one right over here. Is it crazy that I know where these scraps are from? <laughs> I recognize a vine. All right, I was just gonna move that, but it already stuck where I put my thumb. I've walked out with little scraps of these transfers stuck to my shoes or my pants before. I think I have a pair of flip-flops where it's got quite a lot of transfer stuck on the bottom. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna stamp. So we're just gonna make sure everything's nice and flat. It is. All right, I am going to grab uh, the black ink this time. Let's see how wet it is. It might come up a little blue because um, I haven't completely washed that as well as it could be. Okay. Nope, let me grab my black ink, sorry. It does not look wet enough. Uh, black. I don't remember when I used these last on a big project. Um, all right, so usually what I do is I, that was probably a little too much and I just use the tip of this to kind of press it down into the pad. And it'll hold it, nothing's gonna drip. The only thing you need to be careful of, and it looks like I maybe did it with this one, is when you're initially putting your ink on, you don't wanna get it into this well right here. And I know myself, so I gotta make sure to get the top on that because Tracy knows. I'll dump it. All right, here we go. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice and juicy. When I'm quiet, can you hear my lights buzzing? I have these fluorescent lights in here, and oh my gosh, if I don't play music, it's deafening. Drive me nuts. All right, so I'm just cleaning off in between the lines where I got a little too excited about my ink and pressed it down too hard. All righty, here we go. So if you tuned in late, I'm again. This is this is on an acetate sheet. All right, so let's have this straight. I am going to drop this in the middle, and as soon as it's touching. I wish it wasn't touching there. Okay, it didn't touch because there's a rim. I am going to press down the middle. Okay, so I'm holding this tight. We're gonna curve it and I'm basically gonna like tickle these, the top of my stamp. 
which is making it contact. And I'm not going to go over it twice, which I did last time. And let's see if I don't, if I get the, um, you know, the double vision thing. This is a lot harder on, although this is an easy project, uh, this is a lot harder way to use your stamp. You know, if you had to cut up or smaller pieces, you wouldn't get this double vision that I'm getting here. It's just because it's big and it's rigid. And lift. And it's meant to be abstract. All right. What do you think of that? That's, that's dark, yeah. But it, it's, it's hard to bend it. But I'm happy with them. I love them. I think this was a really fun, um, quick project. Let me lift this up and just say goodbye and show them to you. So these are the two that we just did these. I don't know what time it is. I never know what time it is. In half an hour, I just did two of these. They'll be quick and easy. Quick and easy to uh, seal. Couple of days, spray sealer. All right, and then you hang your flowers in them. Fun project, don't throw away your scraps. There's always something to do with your scraps. Um, head on over to my page, Serendipity House LLC. Give me a follow, I would love to see you there. Um, and also, if you're looking for a retailer, I'm gonna drop the link to our retailers right below here. And if you're watching on replay or you have a question that didn't get answered, go ahead and ask, because I'm gonna go look in here and I'll make sure to follow up and answer questions. And stay tuned for the, this piece in a couple of days. I'm so excited to uh, photograph it. I really had a super time. That is the Wander transfer on there, cut up, and Le Petit Rosier, which is the transfer that has um, the French poem on it. So um, thanks, you guys. Be safe. Have a great day, and um, I'll see you guys next Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Bye.